Hey there folks, welcome back to my channel, Relationship Haven. In today's story, OP found out his wife cheated on him with her married affair partner. Then after her affair partner dumped her, she started freaking out after finding out OP was going to divorce her. Then, even worse news broke that the affair partner had been diagnosed with an incurable STD. Now the wife is panicking even more. Talk about karma. Let's get into today's story. Unfaithful wife that I still have trust issues with will probably contact her affair partner soon despite agreeing to no contact and the consequence of divorce. TLDR, wife of many years fell out of love with me and had a physical affair with a married man. She fell in love with him, he dumped her, but they remained friends until I discovered the affair. They carried on messaging each other until my wife heard me speaking to a divorce lawyer and panicked and proceeded to love bomb me. Is there any hope for a marriage? Could she be a unicorn? I'm approaching the one-year anniversary of my D-Day. Here is my story. We are both in our mid-40s. We have been together for more than 30 years, since high school. We have two teenage children. My wife, her choice, has been a stay-at-home mom for the most of the last 15 years, whilst I work hard in a stressful but well-paid job to provide for our family. A few years ago, my wife and I went through the traumatic experience of the death of one of our children. My wife struggled more than myself, I tried to remain strong for her and our other children. She had bereavement counseling, but that did not help her. Her mental state, due to our loss, was all over the place and things got progressively worse with our marriage. Around two years ago, we had a massive drunken argument. I said lots of nasty things, called her names, no physical abuse. I was stupid and immature. I did not apologize for my outburst and this resulted in a dead bedroom and a lack of good communication. I turned to alcohol and I became depressed about the whole situation. This time last year, I was considering divorce. I wanted things to get better between us, but I knew we both had to change for that to happen. As a last throw of the dice, I suggested marriage counseling. She declined, but I had individual counseling. This helped me. I gave up drinking, I lost a lot of weight, and I got into my best ever physical shape with lots of exercise. My mental health and attitude towards my wife improved. We were both happier, we had just started becoming intimate again, and it looked like our marriage could survive. So things were looking up again until by sheer chance, I discovered her affair. In retrospect, there were lots of red flags, but I always trusted her and assumed she would never cheat on me. I did some snooping and confronted her with only a small amount of what I knew. Initially, the affair was denied and I got the trickle truth. For example, she told me she had only kissed her affair partner a few times, but her story had lots of holes in it. I caught her totally off guard with the confrontation and my questions. The next day, I was all set to show her my proof that they had gone beyond kissing each other when she admitted to having unprotected sex on more than one occasion with the affair partner. But it was over now, as he had finished it. The physical affair had started not long after our big drunken argument the year before. She came out with the classic line, I still loved you, but was no longer in love with you. She recently told me that because of the arguments, that she thought I no longer loved her when her affair started. This was not true. I did still love her, despite our problems, as she would have found out if we were communicating and had asked me. Following her confession, I took my wife's phone off of her. She gave me the passcode and passwords to email and social media apps. I read all their available messages. There were gaps in chats probably removed just before her confession of the physical affair. But by now, I had pretty much the full story. The day after I messaged the affair partner from my wife's phone to get his side of the story and to threaten him should he carry on seeing my wife. His story matched my wife's version. He had finished the physical affair due to the damage it would cause to both families and he wanted a life with his betrayed spouse and not my wayward spouse. He told me what an amazing person my wife was. She had fallen for him and that's when he ended it because it was getting too serious for him. He apologized to me and said that he would tell his wife what he had done. I told him that was up to him as I didn't want someone else to suffer the pain I had suffered. I told him that if he ever saw my wife again, then I would tell his wife. I did not tell him to break off contact because my plan was to install keylogger software on my wife's phone. Bear in mind that we were in the middle of lockdown at this point in time so there was no way that they could see each other. For the next few weeks, they would message each other. My wife told her affair partner that I knew about them. The affair partner did not tell her that I had messaged him. It was amusing to watch this unfold. They were now having arguments and blaming each other for their affair. My wife, in an attempt to save our marriage or stop me kicking her out of her house, was love bombing me and at the same time giving her affair partner crap for using her and treating her badly. However, she also said she wished that they could see each other and chat properly about what had happened. She did appear to show remorse for how much her actions had hurt me. She admitted to me that she had been selfish. I asked her if she had ever cheated on me before. 
She answered that with a subtle difference to the question that it was her one and only affair. I am now suspicious she had a one night stand with a former boyfriend many years ago, but I have no proof. She said she had fallen back in love with me because I had changed for the better. But as we all know, actions speak louder than words and you cannot believe a word that a cheater says. Even at this point, she was still sending messages to him, although they were innocent messages as they were discussing their hobby, which is where they first met and got to know each other as friends. I phoned a lawyer to discuss my options and see how things would look should we divorce. My wife overheard some of the conversation and this seemed to wake her up to the reality of the situation. Soon after, my wife sent a final message to the affair partner telling him that she would not be chatting any longer and he was not to get in touch with her ever again. Contact between them did stop and at this point, I gave her some boundaries and the consequences should she break them. One of the rules was no contact or see the affair partner ever again and if he contacted her, to let me know immediately. I told her if she broke that rule, I would divorce her. She agreed to this. I told her she needed counseling to work on herself and find the reason why she did what she did. She agreed, although she said she felt forced to go, but only went twice and then stopped, telling me she already knows the reasons for her affairs, so it did not need any more counseling. I saw the same counselor a dozen times and despite client confidentiality, my counselor did tell me my wife was remorseful. This was a few months ago. My wife and I have been getting on better than ever. I do love her, but I have not forgiven her yet. There has been no contact between my wife and her affair partner, but I have reason to believe that may change shortly. Finally, given all that information, the questions I have are, one, does anyone think my wife has any chance of redeeming herself and remaining faithful to me, or should I run a mile? Two, should she contact the affair partner again, as I suspect she will, even though it will be to chat about something innocent, should I file for divorce as she will have broken the no contact rule? Three, if the divorce is not the answer, is there anything else she or I should do for a successful reconciliation? Edit for update. I am so grateful for all your replies. This has really helped me. I will try and respond to each one and answer questions. Here's the update. As I suspected, my wayward spouse has contacted her affair partner. She will now face the consequences. I posted my story a couple of weeks ago. I received lots of help, advice, and also some vitriol in the chat function. I read all the replies but could not respond to all of them due to time. I ignored the abuse. There are some strange people out there, no idea what your agenda is, but it's water off a duck's back to me. To recap, the timeline is not exact, but the story is. We've been together for over 30 years. We started dating in high school. Two years ago, my wife and I were going through a rough patch and she had an affair. D-Day was 12 months ago at the start of lockdown. Unbeknown to my wife, I read some of their messages. It appeared the physical affair was over, but they were still in contact. I later discovered that he had finished the physical affair seven months prior to D-Day, probably because my wayward spouse had fallen in love with him and he was never going to leave his wife. She was upset and hurt that he had dumped her, especially as he had told my wife that he loved her. They remained friends and continued to message each other. My wife told him that she could not get him out of her head. This time last year, I had never heard of Reddit. I did not know who to ask for help or advice. I know my methods are a bit messed up, but my cunning plan was to try and get the whole truth about the affair and determine if our marriage could be saved. Not an easy thing to do when you cannot believe a word a cheater says. My wife could not see the affair partner, so I assumed she would contact him using her phone to tell him that I knew about the affair. For the next six months, whilst we were supposedly trying to fix things, I could, without my wife's knowledge, see their messages. Some brief highlights are as follows. They lied to each other and they both blamed each other for the affair. He said their friendship crossed the line and he regretted what they did. My wife never said she regretted the affair. He cherished their moments together but also wanted to try and forget it ever happened. An oxymoron? My wife told him that she hated him and that he had used her. He denied this, but other times she said that she missed him. Also contradictory. She said that she was broken and she could not live with the hurt she had caused me. So at times she did display some signs of remorse. On a number of occasions, she said that she would not be able to see him again and she was not going to contact him ever again. A few days later, she would message him. During these six months, I got myself into great physical shape. I had individual counseling. There was hysterical bonding. My wife told me that she had made a huge mistake. She wanted a future with me. I meant the world to her. She had fallen back in love with me. I asked her if she could go back in time and change things. What would she do differently? Her reply was to not let a good friendship turn into an affair and fix things between us before the affair started. She told me that she would accept any consequence but begged me not to tell our children what she had done. Our children do not deserve to be hurt. The truth was she did not want them to hate her. 
On the plus side, my wayward spouse did not say anything derogatory about me to the affair partner. At least not from the messages I have read, but she must have said stuff about our marriage to him previously. He said things like, I hope you can correct the things that were wrong between you. I hope you can move forward, etc. On the negative side, my wayward spouse told him that I loved her and she was going to be okay, presumably because she thought I was not going to leave her. But she never said to the affair partner that she loved me. At one point she got angry with the affair partner and said, All I need is my children. She never said that she needed me or loved me. Six months ago, I thought reconciliation was going to be impossible. I rang a lawyer to discuss my options. My wife eavesdropped on some of the conversation. I don't know how much she heard, but this was the wake-up call she obviously needed. At this point, her attitude changed and she finally broke off contact with the affair partner. I set some boundaries and consequences. The main one being, no contact under any circumstances, otherwise I will divorce her. She agreed to all my conditions. Given all the messages I had read between them, I was doubtful that she would not contact him again, but for five months, she maintained no contact and things seemed to be going in the right direction between us. A few weeks ago, my wife discovered from a mutual friend of theirs that the affair partner has an incurable disease. I thought she would contact him, and sure enough, she has done. She has betrayed my trust yet again. The messages were innocent enough to begin with. She sent him positive thoughts. She hoped the treatment would be a success. But then she said, Getting better soon and look forward to seeing you soon. And the final dagger into my broken heart? One last thing. Do you regret meeting me? No. Good. Me either. That's all, folks. I'm done with her. There is nothing left worth fighting for. I know divorce is going to cause me and our children hurt and financial hardship. I know she has mental issues, but she is not willing to get help and I cannot force her. I know there is no point wasting any additional time trying to understand her actions, but I still wonder how she could do this to me and our children. I am going to speak to a lawyer again, this time without her knowing, and get her served. I hope to get joint custody of our children. The starting point for the split of our financial assets will be 50-50, but I want to try and get more than this by hook or by crook. I will be receiving some inheritance once the house of my deceased relative is sold. I also have Bitcoin that I purchased a few years ago and the value of this has increased to a nice amount of money. I also have a large pension pot. Is it possible to prevent my soon-to-be ex-wife getting her hands on the proceeds? Edit. Thanks everyone for your replies. Some really helpful info. I'm in the UK. I will try and answer as many questions as I can. Update. Trial separation. Good or bad idea? Today, my adulterous wife offered to stay at her parents' house for a short while to help me heal and decide what I want to do. This suits me as I need a break from her. I can plan my exit strategy better and sample what life on my own and with our teenage children would look like. Our children are unaware of their mother's adultery, so she or us are going to have to tell them soon or come up with an amazing excuse as to why their mother has temporarily moved out. Telling the truth to our children is obviously the best strategy, something my wife has been desperately trying to avoid, so I'm waiting for her to have a change of heart on a trial separation. Assuming the trial separation goes ahead, I expect it won't be long before she will be pleading to come back home and make a fresh start. What sort of conditions should I set for the trial separation? Things like she must stay away from her affair partner, etc. One last thing, a little anecdote from today. I was triggered this weekend when I ended up cycling through a park that I knew my wife and her affair partner met for one of their trysts. I knew from GPS that they had spent about 90 minutes stationary in one particular secluded wooded area of the park. She does not know what I know, but I have never asked for details of their sex exploits. I know they were not having a picnic, and I did not expect the truth, but out of curiosity, I asked my wife what kind of sex did she and her affair partner have in the park, and how long were they there? Her reply? Wait for it. Unsure how long we were there, as we did go for a run, it wasn't what you probably describe as full-blown sex. How would you describe it? Fumbling, I suppose. A few more questions from myself, as this was a bit bizarre, and then I asked, Did you give him oral sex? She proceeded to start waffling on about her counselor telling her that it's not a good idea to talk about the sexual side of things. So the answer is yes, then. Where did he finish? He didn't. And apparently, neither did she. He did not give her oral either. In conclusion, that is a lot of time spent fumbling with no end result. Edit. A quick update on the fumbling episode. I decided to question her further due to her version being a bit strange. I said all I want is the truth and how I'm supposed to believe anything she says when she continues to lie to me. She has told me they did not have oral. They tried to have full intercourse, but on this occasion, he had trouble getting it up. I do actually believe her now, but why would she not say this? Could she have been saving his embarrassment? I still think she would have tried some oral to get him ready. 
so the story has changed to over an hour of trying to get him up and not achieving much. She admitted that he didn't have any ED at the other parks, so maybe this park was not to his liking. OP, I'm glad to hear about the immediate action you took on this situation. As soon as you found out about the affair, you immediately contacted your lawyer, which is good on your part. Your wife wants to reconcile now because she's realized that she has completely messed up her life. With cheaters, you have to let karma serve its justice. Also, I would highly recommend that you tell the affair partner's wife. She needs to know about the damage her husband has done to your life as well as hers. I would also tell the kids what happened so they can truly know what kind of mother they have. I would also highly recommend an STI check since it could have gone from him to her to you. Let's see what the comments had to say about the situation. First up from Admirable Ad 801. Get a lawyer, make it official and in writing. She must stay at her parents, not just show up. She must tell the children the truth for the trial separation. She must go zero contact, since it bothers you. She must give a full timeline, including when and where sexual intercourse took place. She should know the timeline will be followed up by a polygraph test to confirm. Explain to her you do not care what she or her therapist thinks. For years, what you thought did not matter to such an extent that she, by her own admission, fell in love with another man. It must also be a requirement that she tells the affair partner wife herself. This is within a week of her moving out. If she refuses, you will know whether there is a chance of her, her and her affair partner or not. If she values him or you more. If you are more valuable, like she now claims, she will do anything for your love to keep you. If she refuses, it's just a rug sweep and he is more important. If she refuses to come clean, I will go with divorce. No marriage can come back from her choosing him again. If she wants you to heal, she must do the work, even if it means her affair partner is hurt. I would include penalties. If she fails, she is not allowed to return to the marital home. I promise you her phone or whatever media she uses to communicate with the affair partner will increase the minute she leaves the house. You have not realized. She loves him. You are the one she settled for. Her last message says that. She has no remorse for meeting him, but she lies to you saying it was a mistake. She knows she cannot keep going on like this, but just once more because he is all she can think of. Whether you postpone it or not, she loves him. If you and your kids hurt now or later, it's going to be the same. Good luck, OP. Thanks for taking your time to listen to today's story. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and comment below on what your thoughts are on today's story. Take care.